Scotland's ruling party, the SNP, has been undergoing unprecedented turmoil over the last few months, culminating in the arrest of former leader Nicola Sturgeon. It's the breaking news to bring you. In the last few moments, Nicola Sturgeon has been arrested. In connection with the ongoing investigation into the funding and finances of the Scottish National Party. Although her arrest was obviously a very dramatic and shocking moment, it was not the first arrest in this ongoing investigation. A 58-year-old man has been arrested this morning. That 58-year-old man is understood at this stage to be Peter Murrell, the husband of Nicola Sturgeon. The detectives are understood to be questioning him about how money set aside for the Scottish independence campaign was spent. Just like Sturgeon, he was then released without charge pending further investigation. Less than an hour after she was released, actually, Nicola Sturgeon herself uh, put out a statement in which she very strongly protested her innocence. So Nicola Sturgeon led the SNP to eight electoral victories in Scotland. They enjoyed phenomenal success. Now Sturgeon's arrest brings immediate pressure on her successor, Hamza Youssef. Both opposition parties and indeed politicians within the SNP are currently calling for him to suspend Sturgeon. My view is that I think Nicola should be considering whether it would be the right thing for her to do for her commitment to the party and also uh, for the smooth running of the, the government. This turmoil has resulted in SNP members and SNP politicians being willing to criticise their leadership, criticise the way that the party is run in a way that they just never would have done before. It, it took Nicola Sturgeon eight years to have her first major rebellion within the SNP ranks. It's taken Hamza Youssef less than eight weeks to achieve the same. It's also the case that this brings wider difficulties for Hamza Youssef, who very much pitched himself as the continuity candidate during the leadership election. Sort of questions, first of all, about how he escapes the shadow of Nicola Sturgeon, but also sort of bringing very much back into focus these questions about transparency and governance within the SNP. Let's not forget that, that they do remain the most popular party in Scotland by a significant margin. Despite all of this turmoil, public support for independence in Scotland doesn't seem to have diminished at all. But what we have seen as well in polling is a falling away of support for the SNP itself, with Labour gaining in the polls. And, and it does seem to be that among Scottish voters there is now this decoupling of their opinion of the constitutional question and then sort of which political party they are supporting.